someone like you to show Now that you're mine, it's so hard to take things slow Hey guys, it is Melissa Morrow with Vintage Bee Design and Rave Home Staging, and today I am in our shop. We are actually going to do a tour tonight when we go live here on Friday. You're watching this hmm, at some future point in time, so if you want to go back to last Friday, you can actually see a tour of the full store after we have done some updates. We're still in the process of doing a few more updates, but you might enjoy the fun space. Right now, I'm standing in a room full of transfers. We carry all of Redesign by Prima transfer papers, as well as many of Hocus Pocus and all of Dixie Bell's transfers. In addition, we carry most of Prima, Dixie Bell, Jamie Ray Vintage, and Grace on Design decoupage papers. Ah, it's amazing. So today's video is all about uh, DIY paint and raised stenciling. We just got in the Prima glass bead gel and I've never used it before. I've seen Kasha use uh, modern arts glass bead gel, but I have never given it a try. So let's see how it goes. The piece that I'm making over in this video was actually donated to us by a client. To get inspired over this sort of very plain Jane Thomasville piece, I went to our decoupage papers because I knew I would want to line the drawer with something pretty and came across this. This stunning paper is by Prima and I'll leave a link in the description for you, but I thought it was so beautiful that I need it. I kind of feel like I want this as wallpaper in my life somewhere. So that could happen. Anyway, uh, I went ahead and I knew I wanted to use DIY paint. I haven't done a tutorial using exclusively DIY paint, so that would be this one. Using the floral pattern, I chose three colors, which would be Cake Batter, Hey Sailor, and Prom Queen. My first step is to give everything a really nice base coat. So I'm starting with the exterior and I'm coating all four sides. One of the interesting things about using DIY paint is that in these darker colors especially, it changes from dark to light and then when you top coat it, it will change back to dark again. We lovingly call this the freak out factor. It's okay, it happens to everyone. And don't worry if the paint seems streaky at first. When it's completely dry, everything will be great. This is just one of those quirky things about using clay-based paints. One of my favorite things about using DIY's clay-based paint is that it sticks really well. Meaning I do have to clean my pieces, but after I clean them, there's no need to sand or prime. On my second coat, because this clay base paint is very thick and rich, I often use a misting bottle to help me get more even coverage. Also use the misting bottle right before I'm ready to start blending. In this case, I've base painted in prom dress and I'm misting and then I'm going to um, apply some Hay Sailor just around the edges and I'll let you watch as I show you my blending technique. If you're not interested in watching the blending technique, I do have this video timestamped, so feel free to jump ahead. Until we get it right. 
once I have this blended to my liking, I am going to go ahead and I'm gonna use my blue sponge and apply some Big Top. And uh, I like to use the blue sponge because, and it's slightly damp, just so you know, because it really seems to provide good, even coverage. And in this case, I'm gonna do only one coat because I'm gonna go back and put something else over it. But typically I would do two to three good solid coats, letting it dry in between. This is the same process that I used on the Hey Sailor um, outside of the piece. However, that was sped up and this is real time. While my drawers are drying, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the top. Here I am using cake batter. My brush is a little wet, so the coverage isn't quite as good. Now I will say with that much scuffing on the top, you could have sanded it to get a more even layer. You also really could have applied some shellac over the top of it to get super even coverage. Because I'm using DIY paint, I wasn't worried about that at all. On the topic of freak out factor with this paint, a lot of time when you are using the DIY paint, while you're painting it or after you're misting it between layers, it often gets to where you can see through the paint and just understand when it dries, it will be completely solid and opaque. If you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you know that I love me some stenciling. With this piece, I decided to not only use the raised stenciling on the front, but to go ahead and replicate the look on the side, but with a little more patina. I'm using the JRV stencil brush in the one and a quarter inch size, and I am using the DIYs prom queen. I like to say prom dress, but it's really prom queen. I have a terrible problem with the name of this paint. <laughs> I really want it to be prom dress. Anyway, uh, maybe it's because my prom dress was this color. No, actually, I think that was homecoming. My homecoming dress was this color. Anyway, that has nothing to do with this. I am using the DIY prom queen, and you can see I've taken most of the paint off my brush, and I'm so it has very little paint on there, and I am using the swirl technique. I went ahead and used the DIY Golden Ticket and lightly stenciled over that, um, just sort of on the edges. This allowed for a more vintage look that had a lot of depth. Spending all my days wishing I was someone else. Now the tables are turned and I climb right out as well. Someone grand in my plea like a coin in a wishing well. We're going under the weather, harder than ever, higher than high we go. I'm flying light as a feather when we're together. I'm falling like a domino. I want to scream and shout, keep it up all night. I want to scream and I am so excited over how beautiful that turned out. And so let's get to the raised stencil. I have my glass bead gel and I didn't make enough the first time that I did this. So I ended up using about three quarters of the jar and then adding, um, I'm gonna say about 20% uh, of golden ticket on top of that. After pouring it together, I am just using one of the transfer sticks to mix it up. And I made sure I had a couple of different spatulas on hand to apply this over the stencil. Remember, we're doing a stencil, so we don't want this to be too liquidy, which means at the end, I sort of gave it the, I'm gonna call it the plop test, wanting to make sure that I had this thick enough that it wasn't going to bleed under my stencil. The size of the stencil was nearly perfect for the two drawers together. Now, I'll show you a thing that I didn't account for, but fortunately, I made sure I knew exactly how this was positioned on the drawers before I got started. Going through the process of using glass bead gel, I did notice there was a little bit of a learning curve. For me, typically when I do raised stencils, if this were my stencil platform, I would use my spatula with it more upright, scraping across the stencil. However, when I did that with the glass bead gel, basically what I ended up doing is scraping the beads off. Instead, I needed to 
lower my spatula and do more of a skim effect. And by skimming over it, what actually happened is I could just move along the top stuff and leave the beads in the holes. Now, unfortunately, this did make for a lot more waste of the product, which I hate to do, but uh, it was really the only way to get the glass bead gel, which is taller than the holes of the stencil. Typically when I do an embossed stencil, I'm using something like chalk paste where the it is only the height of the stencil. In this case, because it was gonna be higher than the holes of the stencil, I needed to skim additional product along and not scrape it over the holes. Moving on to the second drawer is where things went horribly wrong. You see, the back side of the drawers were not completely flat, and while they were laying nice and still with the first stencil, when I went to add to the second one, it rocked just a little bit. And you can see the slight movement in the stencil is creating a huge mess. There is no way to recover on this. It is going to be horrible underneath, no way to have crisp lines. And since this is a raised stencil, that is more important than ever. My only choice was to go ahead and remove the entire stencil. This was bittersweet because you can see on the top, it's absolutely stunning. On the bottom, all I can do is wipe it off. If you're looking at the pattern on the second drawer and thinking, oh, well, you can just line that up. Well, the problem with that is one, it was already a mess. And two, it's actually just that weird clay-based chalk thing when the moisture is completely wiped away it'll dry within a minute and you won't be able to see those marks at all. I should know I actually tried for a hot minute and then I remembered how perfectly this stencil fit the drawer and exactly how it would line up. The only problem I had then was how floppy the stencil was which would keep my edges from being crisp. I came up with the solution of adding a small table next to it which worked out Perfect. Now I just needed to continue adding my glass bead gel. Oh my gosh, it is just so gorgeous. Look at all that shine and shimmer. Now I'm gonna let it dry overnight. When morning came and I got to the shop, I noticed that my beautiful shiny gold had turned a little bit into, I'm gonna say a patinaed gold. So I went with the golden rule, which is DIY paints, gilding paste, and started applying it to the hardware and then sort of the highlights of the little glass beads. I waited all my life for someone like you to show. Now that you're mine, it's so hard to take things slow. Oh, don't wanna wait another day, don't wanna fight to fade to glow. In the end, I'm really glad that it had sort of turned into a brown and then I added the gold on top of it because I think that gave it a lot of depth and dimension. 
now we've got to work on this top. I poured a little bit of DIY's dark and decrepit liquid patina and the clear liquid patina onto a plate, thinking, I don't know, somewhat misguidedly that the clear liquid patina would lighten the dark and decrepit. I don't think it did, so that was probably a step I didn't need to take. But here again, I am using a um, wet blue sponge that um, we do sell those at vintagebedesign.com. And um, I'm using this and I'm kind of going over the, the liquid patina. What I'm doing is kind of creating a little bit of a faux wood grain. And it does need to be a wet sponge. And typically you don't want to overwork your liquid patina when you're laying it out. Here, uh, I probably overworked it a smidge, but I'm gonna add another layer over the top and I wanted to be sure you did see the wood grain. Um, you can start to see where it's starting to pull apart a little bit as I work it, um, but I, I didn't want it too dark, it didn't want it too light, so I just kind of kept playing. I could have misted this and probably gotten a little bit more movement. Uh, I didn't think of that at that moment. So after that dried, I'm gonna give it a very light sanding with a sanding sponge, 220 grit, and it just sort of wipe the dust off. Next up, I'm adding a little bit of Golden Ticket onto a plate where I'll be taking another clean blue damp sponge, and I'm doing the same thing here. I'm just basically skim coating it with my top coat sponge and laying a layer of the Golden Ticket on top. We are now on to the last part of it, where we're gonna add that paper to the drawers, finally, the inspiration. So I am using DIY's Crystal Clear Chandelier Liquid Patina, and I am just gonna give it a good coating to adhere my paper. This is a really great uh, medium for decoupage. I really love it, and um, it's fun to use. It has a great sheen and a great feeling afterwards, and it does well with this sort of heavier paper. And I've already pre-cut the paper. I'm just laying it down carefully, and then I'm going to do the same thing right over it and add another layer of the Crystal Clear Chandelier Liquid Patina. And a quick reminder of what we started off with and just how far we've come. I adore this piece. It all started off with this inspiration from Redesign with Prima and their decoupage paper, turning this old piece into something absolutely stunning. A little more boho than I typically do, but I love the outcome. If you've made it this far, please let me know in the comment section what you think about it. And if you love it, what's your favorite part? Thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more like it, please be sure to hit like and subscribe. Also be sure to join us on our Facebook and Instagram pages where you can find us under Vintage Bee Design and be sure to check out our community on Facebook, um, Creating the Hive, where you can post your videos if you are another DIYer, or you can find lots of good information and a great community to ask questions and other things that are fun regarding all things DIY.